Hey guys, welcome to another episode of RGCC Biology Revision. Today we're going to be covering section 7.3 and 7.4 of the syllabus, which is looking at the topic of digestion, both mechanically and chemically. So first of all, what is digestion? Now digestion can either be mechanical, which involves physically breaking the food into smaller pieces, and chemical, which involves using enzymes breaking down the food into simpler nutrients that can be absorbed and then used by our cells. Now of course for mechanical digestion, the first thing that we should uh, think of is our teeth. Now we have four different types of teeth in our body or, or in our mouths and the first one is incisors which is located in the very front of our mouths and uh, they have this chisel shaped structure. And uh, we use these to bite off pieces of our food. We've got our canines, which look quite similar, but a bit, they're a bit pointier than the incisors, and they're located on either side, side of them. And uh, we use canines also to bite off pieces of food. We then have our premolars, which are located behind the canines, and they have two cusps. Now, we call uh, the pointy parts of the teeth cusps, like so. So in this diagram here, we've got two cusps, and... Um, Premolar can, premolars can either have one or two roots, and in this diagram we only have one, but they can have two as well. And uh, premolars are used to tear and grind food. Now, then at the very back of our mouths, we've got molars, which uh, has a very similar function to premolars. Uh, we use these to chew and grind our food. They can have either four or five cusps, and two or three roots. In this diagram, we only have two, but they can also have three. Now, you need to know uh, the structure of a tooth and be able to label, uh, if given a diagram, uh, each of the structures or the layers of a tooth. Now, the, the parts of the tooth that show, uh, that are exposed, are what we call the crown, and below that, within the, within the gums, we call that the root. Now, the very f uh, first part of the tooth is the enamel, which is the hardest part of our entire body. Uh, highest, hardest substance, and uh, we've got our dentine, which is right underneath that, which is not as uh, hard as the enamel, and we have the pulp, which contains our blood vessels and nerves, uh, which provide um, uh, our teeth with the, the necessary nutrients and uh, the, the, the sensory aspects of it. And then we have uh, the cement, which is some kind of substance, which is a pretty hard substance that covers uh, the root of the tooth. Okay, so it's just these structures that you need to be able to kind of label um, in a test. And uh, you need to know how dental decay occurs. Now, we took a look at the structure of an enamel here, and uh, this is quite significant in the process of dental decay. And what happens is bacteria is always present in the surface, on the surface of our teeth. Now, Bacteria, along with food deposits, form a layer of, of what we call plaque. Now, bacteria in the plaque feed on sugars from what we eat, and uh, this process produces acid. Now, the acid dissolves the enamel, and uh, this causes a hole to form. Now, if the hole reaches the pulp here, uh, which contains, you know, nerves, uh, it'll result in an infection, and uh, that will cause a toothache because of all the sensory kind of uh, neurons that are located in this region of the tooth. Now, how do we prevent dental decay then? Well, uh, first of all, we want to kind of avoid sugary food so that the bacteria can't make the acid in the first place. Um, but of course, regular cleaning is needed to remove uh, the plaque. And uh, you could possibly use flossing uh, to remove trapped food between the teeth that uh, a normal toothbrush can not really reach, and a regular dentist uh, visit will surely kind of uh, allow you to treat decay earlier, which is uh, better, and aid in removal of thick plaque, which usually can't be removed just by brushing your teeth. Now, we also need to take into consideration the chemical chemical digestion that occurs in our alimentary canal, and. Um, so here I've uh, kind of written down uh, in red what the uh, extended curriculum uh, students should know, and everything in black is what uh, 
the limit of what the core students should be able to uh, kind of um, study and know. Alright, so uh, we've got three different types of enzymes. We've got amylase, protease, and lipase. Now, amylase is an enzyme which uh, digests starch into maltose. And uh, you can find amylase in both the mouth, uh, in our saliva, and our, uh, in, in our duodenum. And uh, the pH that they prefer is slightly alkaline. And so uh, the, the substrate that is digested is starch into maltose. And for those that are undertaking the extended curriculum, you also need to know that this maltose is then broken down to glucose uh, by something uh, by an enzyme actually called maltase, which is located on the epithelial lining of the small intestine. And uh, secondly, we've got protease, which uh, you can find in the stomach. And uh, if you the protease in the stomach we call pepsin, and the protease in the duodenum, duodenum is what we call uh, trypsin. And uh, the conditions that they prefer in the stomach is acidic and uh, alkaline in the duodenum. Okay, and uh, so a protease is uh, is an enzyme that breaks down protein into amino acids. Now the last one is lipase, which you find in the duodenum from the pancreatic juice, and they prefer alkaline conditions too. And uh, their, their role is to kind of uh, digest the fat into fatty acids and glycerol. Now, I've told you that uh, enzymes in the stomach prefer uh, acidic conditions. And this is maintained by hydrochloric acid, which also has the function of killing bacteria by denaturing uh, the bacterial enzymes. And uh, I've also, to uh, also told you that in the duodenum, enzymes normally have a uh, optimum pH of alkaline conditions, and that is maintained by both the pancreatic juice and the bile. And uh, we also talked about this in the previous video, but vial bile, sorry, has a function of, uh, of emulsifying fats into droplets, uh, which increase the surface area for chemical digestion of, uh, of fats and lipids. So here's uh, a really quick checklist of what you should be able to know. Um, so you should know the definition of chemical and mechanical digestion, uh, the four types of human teeth and their functions, uh, explain the progression of tooth decay and the methods to prevent it, uh, know the structure of a tooth and know the main aspects of chemical digestion in the human alimentary canal. And uh, once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.